Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to complete a Fight the Storm mission. I've got a Power Level 100 mission selected here. It was the highest Power Level mission that was available today. And for this, I'm going to use a Constructor Loadout. I generally choose Constructor Loadout when I'm doing a defense type mission. So I've got Base Kyle in the lead to increase the building health by 84%. I've got Mega Base to increase the base connectivity by one. I've got Power Base Nox with power modulation to heal the structures. I've got Frozen Castle from the Ice King so that husks that walk on the structures are slowed down. Cupid's Arrow so that my arrows splinter and Survivalist to heal me up. And then Banner and Slow Field. Banner is so that I can set my respawn point to Slow Field in case everything goes wrong. And then Supercharged Traps so that all of my traps do 8.5% more damage for each constructor I've got in support. So with three constructors in support, that gives me a total of around about 25% extra damage. We've loaded into the mission. And the first thing I need to do is find some blue glow. And there's some indicated on the mini-map, so I'm just looking for that. It's somewhere around here. It must be on the top of this hill. I'm not really worried about killing any of the husks at this point. More just getting to the blue glow. And now I've got the blue glow. I need to run around the map and try to find the atlas. Some people like to build up and go across a, a sky bridge to find the atlas. I generally just run around. And there you can see I found it, it's uh, directly up ahead. Target located. Drop the Atlas on the target when you're ready. Okay, so now I've placed the Atlas, I need to clear out some of the environmental structures around. You can see you've got one set of spawns right over there. And the other set of spawns, as you can see from the mini map where the, the white clouds are, that's the direction from where the other has to come. This seems like a pretty good location. So I've placed cones all around the structure and I'm going to turn those into a pyramid. Using this shape of structure just means that I can move around from one side to the other when the husks are coming from different directions just to keep an eye on things much more easily. If you've got flat walls or an inverted pyramid, which seems to be common structures I see, it makes it a lot more difficult to get from one side to the other. Okay, so I'm just going to knock this house down out of the way. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I have the mounted turret and I'm just going to jump on that now and destroy the house. I'm not really worried about getting any of the resources that you get from knocking down the house. And that you can see it's got a basement which is good because it means any husks that come from that side are not going to be able to walk across the basement itself. It just means I've got slightly less area that I'm going to need to directly defend against the husk walking up. Okay, so now that metal has had a chance to fully update, I am going to upgrade it to tier 2. Just having a look at this basement, see if there's anything I need to do in there. I don't think there is. It's got a, a way out for the husks. Now if the husks get knocked into a basement and they can't get out, they will despawn immediately, but because there are some stairs, they will try to get out. Okay, and I've knocked out that piece of floor because most husks can't jump. So if you can't walk up a set of terrain without jumping, that means the husks can't walk up there. And that may mean that they bash structures. Now I've upgraded everything to tier 3. And what I'm doing now is I'm placing a roof across the whole of the structure. Just a square of, of wood. And the reason for that is it gives me somewhere to hang traps from. Okay, so in this middle section I am going to use a ceiling gas trap and that's because husks will climb up to the top of this structure and stand and try and bash their way directly through the ceiling 
and so the gas will be constantly hitting them. And then on the sloping sides, I'm going to use ceiling drop fat. And this will, first of all, it will damage the husks, and secondly, it will push the husks. And that means that they're not going to be able to stand on the sides easily and bash it down. So, picking my ceiling traps. So it's only a power level 100 mission, so I don't need to use you know, super high level traps. I could probably get away with power level 77 traps if I really wanted to. And you can see this exhaust pipe here indicates the way in which the trap will push the husks. So you want to stand with your back in the direction you want the husks to be pushed and place the traps that way. So as you can see, as I go round, I orientate myself, put the traps in the direction I want. And that's so the tyres will roll for a long way in a particular distance. You can see they're pushing all the way down into that uh, basement there. So any husks that get hit from that side will get pushed into that basement and be out of the way for a while. So I've placed the ceiling drop traps. Now I'm going to put electric fields on all of the corners. And that just means that the husks that do come up the edges will get hit before they even get tackled by the drop traps. Just only a bit of extra damage due to them. And because they've got a, a decent range, they don't just affect the husks that are directly underneath them. They will also affect husks in a one tile radius around them. Just upgrading that wood just to make sure that if a propane tank does get up here, it doesn't break them. Putting an anti-air trap on the top. Place my base so that it affects all of the tiles. And putting down your base just gives every structure affected by it 60 armor, which means it takes less damage from anything that hits it. You need to deal with all of these uh, lovers as quickly as you can because the damage that they do with their projectiles is pretty bad uh, and they will stand away from the traps of your building structure like this because you've got nothing that's going to attack them from a distance away. Fortunately though because I've got the base on that means all my structures are going to get healed up by 4% every 10 seconds. But what I'm going to do is just going to add these extra floor spikes on. They also have heal field builds attached on them which means the structures get 4.8% every 10 seconds and that adds on top of the base Kyle or power base not to have a perk which means they're going to get a total of about 8% every 10 seconds. So now I've built the structure I'm happy with that I'm going to start the objective and I now have to defend for 8 minutes. Got one group of plastics coming from over there I'm just going to pick them off as I go the traps will deal with most of them, but if I can defend that, today, that makes it a bit safer. I will try and get rid of any of the husks that are kind of a ranged attack. Now, the blasters, they're not going to attack your structure itself. They may hit the walls, but they're not interested in damaging the objectives. But because they shoot at you and you haven't got any traps that can damage them that far out, I need to take care of them. Same thing with lovers, same thing with flingers. I'm just really watching out for those more than anything else. And these zappers will be You can see the electric fields are damaging the husks before they even get to the structure. And any that walk up the side are getting hit by those tires, and then those tires are rolling back quite a long way to hit a lot of the husks even further out. I'm taking a bit of damage here from all of the husks that are wandering around and shooting at me, but because of the shape of the structure, I can walk around and take cover behind it. And then surviving this team perk, although it doesn't give me huge amounts of healing, it gives me enough if I'm relatively careful. But it will just heal me back massively over time as the traps and my weapons damage.
just going to put down my banner. Got to put that down earlier. It just means if I do end up getting killed by the husks, I can respawn right next to the base and carry on defending. The riot huskies are sometimes a bit of a worry because they, they take a lot of punishment. really causing too much of a problem. This uh, pyramid design works really well in lower levels. You can almost get away with having no traps on it if you have Thunder Thora in your loadout. If you have to walk on the structure will take damage. You can also use electric pulse penny so that means husks that hit the structure to take damage. Obviously they won't do anything to Lobbers and pitches and those kinds of stuff, but anything with melee. The structure will also damage the electric pulse penny, so it can be worked. Okay. It seems to have taken some damage to the Atlas. I think that's where a dinosaur glitched. I've got no notice of the damage to the outside of my structure. It is completely solid and I've not taken any more damage. Now you can see one of the advantages of building pyramid design, the uh, propanes have thrown their tanks, but because it's a slope, the tanks have hit the top of the slope and just roll down and explode it when they're not next to the structure. Any that do land on the top should get taken care of by the anti-air trap placed at the top, but I can just ignore most of the propanes without having to worry that their tanks are going to destroy the structure. Any, um, any that do explode, because the walls have based not that uh, Kyle on them, it's an 84% extra health. It's unlikely that a propane is going to break through that and then quickly kill the build attached. Wall strikes on the slopes and the power base not stealing on all of the structures they should be on so far. You have to notice in this corner it seems to take quite a lot of damage. They've got a little group of Lobbers down there, and they all seem to be throwing at that one corner. Unfortunately, because of the structure holding the roof, the lobbers projectiles are not getting taken care of by the anti -air. So I'm just going to get rid of those lobbers now before they do too much damage. And I don't need to do anything to heal that structure up. It appears to be strong enough, and it will just naturally regenerate. to deal with flingers. Flingers are quite easy to locate. You listen out for the noise they make that roar. You know that there's a flinger and then just look for the trail of the projectile that they're throwing. They can throw either damaging projectiles the same as lobbers do or they can throw other huts as partial defences. So it's important that you take care of the flinger relatively quickly. Generally speaking you'll only get a couple that spawn in a mission and they, only, they generally will spawn all pretty much at the same time, so if you hear the roar of flingers, you can take care of all of the flingers in short order. Okay, just over two minutes left. I don't think we're going to get a mini boss in this mission. It usually would have spawned by now. Although they just can sometimes spawn at late as kind of a minute before the end, it's unlikely they generally spawn about three minutes before the end. I haven't seen any smashes either, which is uh, good because smashes can absolutely ruin your base. And then, it's, although a smasher itself won't attack the objective. It will just destroy all of the builds around it, allowing all of the other husks to pour in. And if you get a smasher stuck inside your defences, it will just smash holes all the way through. And whilst you're trying to patch up one side, it will rip through the other side. So you need to take care of smashers. If they do spawn, but fortunately we don't have any in this mission. It's just been mostly low level husks and a couple of lovers. This Atlas design will work on a Category 2, Category 3 and Category 4. You can just build the same structure around all of those. 
and if you find you need more traps then you can extend out the ceiling to put more ceiling electric fields or drop traps or whatever your preferred ceiling trap is. You can put freeze traps around the base, you can put tar pits down. I wouldn't recommend tar pits underneath a tire trap because the impact of the tire will cause the tar pit to flame out. And also, if you find a lot of husks are attacking the corners, rather than going up the straight edges, you can put a low wall around the corners. So, you know, put just a little bit of healing build attached, wall spikes on it, just to put the husks off, bashing through it, and maybe then you'll put a little bit, so they'll get hit by fire and not back. the last 15 seconds of the mission, all been pretty easy. Nothing has got anywhere through any of the structures. Even when I've been over on one side concentrating on that, the other side held up without any of the other. So yeah, pretty successful defense. Hope you find this video useful. Thank you for your time.